What's up YouTube? Welcome to Ghana Near Photography. My name is Don Alabi. Today I'll take you through frequency separation using median. I'm sure most of you are used to doing frequency separation using Gaussian blur. This tutorial is a basic frequency separation tutorial aimed at beginners. I'll take you through how to do frequency separation, how to use the mixer brush tool in Photoshop, the mixer brush tool settings and a whole lot. So stick around and watch to the end because there is so much to learn from this video. Now the image you see on the screen here is a final image. This is what we want to achieve. This is the image raw process in Capture One and brought into Photoshop. I have a tutorial on how I raw process my images in Capture One and then bring them to Photoshop and then send them back to Capture One. So I'll include the links in the description. So make sure you check them out after watching this video. So this is before retouching and this is after retouching. Over here are the steps we took like uh, frequency separation, micro dodge and burn um, and a whole lot of other things that would apply my proprietary melanin skin tone which I will include a link in the description and a whole lot of things. So without wasting time let's just uh, delete these and start from scratch and oh if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet kindly do so and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my tutorials when i upload them and please like this video if it's been helpful to you it helps the algorithm suggest my video to more people thank you in order not to waste time i've already done blemish removal we will just move straight to the business of the day which is frequency separation using the median now there are other ways of doing frequency separation the one i used to do was what um, i think most of you are used to where you duplicate the background layer twice name one low and then the top one high and then disable this pick this go to filter Gaussian blur over here then you choose a value that blurs out all the details let's say 12 okay and then you pick this and then go to image apply image and then over here you choose low and then you subtract from low leave this here and then okay and then you change it to linear light and then group this so that even when you disable and enable it's the same as the background layer so this is using Gaussian blur which most of us are used to I have a tutorial on how to do this I'll include a link in the description also but today we want to use a different method which is using the median so instead of Gaussian blur we are going to do frequency separation using median so let's delete this and then start so first of all we want to create two duplicates of this background layer so we press command j that's to make the first duplicate and then command j again to duplicate and i'm using a macbook that's why i'm using command j if you're using a windows machine it's a windows and then j so take note or if you don't want to use the shortcut just drag this to new and then drag it again to this new layer and that will create the two duplicates so we just name the bottom one low frequency and then the top one high frequency okay so we have our uh, two additional layers so first of all let's disable the high frequency and on the low frequency we go to filter noise and then right here we see median so once we click on it we just scroll through and then see the value for the radius that works well for us now this value will change based on the type of image you're working on this thing we are doing is on an 8-bit image so the values for an 8-bit image will change or let me say the process for an 8-bit image will change slightly if you are doing a 16-bit image later i'll do a tutorial on how to do this same frequency separation for a 16-bit image so take note now mostly from 1 to somewhere around 12 works depending on the kind of image you're working on now the aim is to separate the texture from the color so you want to give it a value that takes away most of the texture. 
So let's say somewhere 10 or 8 will do. I found out that 8 works mostly for me. So let me just type in 8 and we click OK. So now we've taken our color layer away onto a different layer. That's the low frequency. So let's now go to the high frequency and then go to image, apply image. And over here, we will say, we'll pick the low frequency because we want to subtract the low frequency from the high frequency. So low frequency, and then here we choose subtract. These values remain here. Now there is, I watched a video which explains why we have these values over here. I wouldn't want to go through that today. So let's keep, let's take note of these values and then keep them. So ma the main things we change are the layer. Make sure you choose the low frequency or whatever you name the color layer over here. And then make sure the blending mode, you choose subtract because you want to subtract the texture from the color. I hope that's understood. So with that, we click OK. Then the last thing you do is come here under the blending mode, choose linear light. So you see, it brings it back. So the next thing we'll do is we'll select both of these. You um, select the first one, the high frequency, hold shift and then click on low frequency. And then over here, you see this uh, folder box over here, create a new group. So you just create it now. I okay, you create a group here and then rename it frequency separation. And then you can add eight bits. Boom. And easily, that's how we have our frequency separate. Now, Creating this process alone doesn't do anything to your image in terms of retouching. So if we disable this whole folder, you see it's the same as the background folder. So once you do this and you're able to disable this and see that there is no change in your image from the background to the new process you've created, you know you are on track. If there is any change, then you need to stop and then restart all over. So you see we disable it and enable is the same thing. So now let's move to the next process, which is using the mixer brush to retouch so that we see the differences. So I'm using Photoshop 2021. So if you come on the left here where the brush is, if you click on it, you see there's no mixer brush showing here. I use shortcuts a lot so I could just cycle through and then get my mixer brush. But let's assume you're a beginner and you, you, you're not used to shortcuts and you come here then, you know, you'll be like, there's no mixer brush too. So how do I get that? Now look at the three dots at the bottom here. When you click and hold, you see a couple of tools over here. So if you go through, you see somewhere here, there is the mixer brush too. So just select it and now you see over here we have some values now over some time i have used a couple of settings here and i have noted that these particular ones work well for me you would have to practice over and over to be able to determine which of these values will work for you don't just take my values and then think they would work perfectly for if they do fine no problem but then if they don't then keep working on them until you find your perfect um, settings i use the wacom tablets and pen so i like using pen pressure so my flow is always i always um, restrict my flow to something low so that i'll brush over and over before getting my desired result something like building up gradually i don't want to just um, brush one and then get my full result. So with these settings, the wet to 20%, load 30%, mix 30%, and then flow to 25%. And then over here, just make sure you select clean brush. And then this one here, see it says clean brush after each stroke. So it's like you're painting with a poster color. So anytime you dip your brush in a color and brush, you would want to wash it, like clean it before you dip it in a different color so the colors don't overlap. So with um, these values selected, we have a mixer brush. See now it's disabled because we haven't selected any layer here. We've selected the whole folder. 
So when we select the low frequency, see now we have a brush. So if you look at the brush settings, I always use a very soft brush. So the hardness is 0%, which means the brush is very soft. And as I said, I use the Wacom tablet and pen. So my process is much more faster. So with this set, I mostly like to disable the high frequency. That way I'm able to see well where the colors are. So I work on one layer at a time. So that it's a personal um, decision. So you can choose to enable both layers and work on the low frequency one first, or if you want to be like me, just disable this and then let's focus on this one. We don't want to see any details. So with that said, we just uh, increase and decrease the size of our brush using the brackets open or close on the keyboard. And with that, we just start brushing. What uh, we are doing is blending the colors where they join the other colors. We want to have a smooth transition. That's what uh, makes the image look smooth. And then don't forget, this is um, a gradual process. Don't just grab this place and then brush it in here. You see what's happening if we do this. I see most images being destroyed like this. So don't do long strokes, just do it short, short, short strokes. Because I'm using the tablet, I'm not sure most of you will see how long I'm uh, stroking. But if you use a mouse, I think it, it gives you that, it shows you how uh, you're stroking. So just follow, you see, I'm doing just gentle and short strokes. You don't necessarily have to brush over the whole face. All you have to do is look for places where the transition is so steep and then blend it in so it doesn't show that um, steep curve. That's all we are trying to do. So let's just continue brushing over. Now, because this tutorial is aimed at beginners, I won't drive fast forward in it. I'll just go through it with you guys so you see that there is nothing hidden being done backstage. So that's what we are doing, just stroking gently, no long strokes, just soft and short strokes. So let's enable this. So this is before and this is now. Before and now. You see, we are making progress. So let's continue doing that. Okay, so as I said earlier that I wasn't going to speed it up, but if I don't do that, this video is going to be very long. So at a point, I'll just speed it up so that we can get this done in the shortest possible time. Okay, so let's enable our high frequency so we can see the image in full. So this is before and this is now. So you can see we are making a lot of uh, improvements. So now we've, we can just zoom in a bit and then see that there are certain places where we need to do some more blemish removal. So with blemish removal, we do that on the high frequency since that's where the texture is. If we disable this, you see, this is very, very sharp. So you get to see the texture very well here. So we can use uh, different tools for blemish removal. Use whichever you're used to. I normally use the clone stamp tool for that. So it's over here. Once you select it, I make sure the sam you sample from only the current layer, which is the high frequency layer. So once we get here, and the settings for that, I prefer using a flow of 20%. As I explained earlier, I use the pressure sensitivity. So I prefer using lower value for the flow. So this, we want to take off this blemish over. So we sample from here and then brush over a couple of times. So by doing that, we get rid of all these blemishes. So with what we are doing is we are sampling the good area and then brushing it over the bad area. With this, you can do it over and over and you will always get something to remove anytime you 
go to a new area so i won't spend much time here so that we can move to the next thing so we'll leave it at that and now with uh, this somebody might want to keep it like this but i would want to do um, some dodge and burn now i have a tutorial on how to create your own dodge and burn uh, process actions and all that so the link will be in the description as well so you can watch it after watching this video so basically this is what we have by doing frequency separation this is before this is after we can go ahead and do dodge and burn um, cleaning of the eyes enhancing of the lips and a whole lot color grading applying um, my melanin skin tone which i have a tutorial on I'll include it also in the description. Like you saw in the final image, we worked on all those things. I have uh, individual videos on those things. So this is a good time for you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that anytime I upload, you get notified. And then you can go through my videos also. I have a lot of videos on retouching and then light setups. So just go through and let me know if there is any thing you would want me to tackle, which I haven't yet. You can send me a message on Instagram, Ghana New Photography, or type it as a comment under a particular video and I promise to check it and reply as soon as possible. So let me know in the comment section if this tutorial has been helpful to you. And don't forget to drop a like and share this video with somebody you know will benefit from it. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for watching.